Okay, here we go with the technology. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, hey, how are you, Richard? Good to see you. That's all right. Green to go forward, I imagine. Forward-looking statements. We like talking about this at MAG. Uh, since 2003, we've had a history of turning forward-looking statements into facts with uh, almost 10 discoveries now, uh, to our credit. And uh, we'll be making some forward-looking statements today, and uh, we are confident that some of those are going to turn into facts. Uh, this is our capital structure. We're pretty tight, 86 and a half million shares on issue. We've got $95 million of uh, cash uh, and no debt, and we're well positioned for the final stage of build out of the uh, Juan Ocipio property. We enjoy uh, wide research coverage, uh, primarily North American analysts. Um, they're up there if you want to have a look at what people think about us. Uh, our share price has recently been, recently been under some pressure. Uh, we've had a major shareholder make a decision to rebalance their portfolio, and within that, uh, MAG has seen six million shares come from this fund manager uh, onto the street in the space of about two weeks. Uh, our understanding now is that selling's done. Um, the share price suffered, but it, given the volume, it's actually held up pretty well, and we're expecting to see some sort of recovery uh, now that that volume's out of the market. So the, the takeaway point from that is now's the time to buy because uh, we expect some share price recovery here in the next week or two. There's our shareholders. You can see our partner at the Juan Ocipio joint venture, Fresneo, is uh, our largest shareholder. But a list of uh, blue chip institutions who have been in this exploration company for a long time, prim primarily because of the quality asset. Uh, we're focused on one commodity, high IRR. Uh, we have a lot of grey hair in the company. We have people who have been through cycles and the heartache of a down cycle. So we don't look at anything unless it's district scale and has the potential to be a high IRR project. Uh, Silver's the focus. Our uh, most advanced project is the Juan Ocipio joint venture in the Fresneo trend of uh, Mexico. And we partner up there with Fresneo PLC, world's largest silver producer. So this is the Fresneo trend, uh, unique trend in the world, the preeminent silver district in the world one of every 10 ounces of silver on the planet comes from this Fresneo district. And you can see the uh, blue or purple, whatever colour you want to call that, uh, joint venture ground uh, nestled within the context of all of the Fresneo holdings in this area. <clears throat> we'll zoom in on the top right hand corner of that joint venture ground. That's the blue on here or the grey. Um, you can see the Juan Ocipio vein and the Valdecanes vein in the top right hand corner. That Valdecanes vein is the engine of this machine. More than 95% of the contained metal at the moment sits in the Valdecanes vein, which runs across to your right uh, onto the Fresneo ground and becomes the Sacito operation, which is the world's largest silver mine at the moment. This picture paints about a thousand stories, but the main thing to take away from here is Fresneo have been mining here for 130 years. Silver's been mined here since 1552, but Fresneo have been here for over 130 years and they've built three similar mines to what they're now building for the joint venture. So very much a de-risk project with Fresneo as the operator. This is a slide into the ground, a section looking below that red line. You see in red the Bonanza zone, which was the initial discovery you see all the infrastructure we've been building since October of 2013. We've now built an underground mine. We're mining mineralised material. First box tick for an underground mine, you get down there and the ore body's there. That's a good thing. And then in 2015, we did four sterilisation holes, holes under that red zone, to just prove that the mineralisation finished, like every other one of these epithermal veins in the Fresneo trend. They're about three to 400 metres high, and then the mineralisation finishes. And we didn't do very well on that sterilisation program. We found further mineralisation. It actually continues at depth. It gets wider, and we've now found additional zo um, zones. Anticipata, in anticipation of a zone, and pre-anticipata. So as great 
as the Val de Carnes mineralised envelope is, it's continued to grow as we drill more. This is what the uh, resources look like. There's uh, 300 million ounces of silver here, one and a half million ounces of gold, uh, a billion pounds of lead, two billion pounds of zinc, and a couple of hundred million pounds of copper so far, which realises a project at 4,000 tonnes per day, uh, returning a uh, after-tax IRR of 44%. Uh, as I said, in good hands with a very experienced operator on the same rock that they've been operating on for over 10 years. Interesting aside here at $8 silver, pretty challenging time for the silver industry. I don't think silver's going to eight, but to give you some idea of the robustness of $8 silver, this project has a 15% after-tax IRR. And this is where we're at at the moment. We've accessed the mineralisation. We're now setting up to do some initial mining and stockpiling of mineralised material to feed into the plant. The plant construction starting. Um, you can see the underground down there. It's almost 24 kilometres of development since uh, 2013. This shows you a picture of the ramp. Uh, all of the underground development, um, it, other than the access to stopes, is of this quality. Five by five ramp. This is being built for uh, around 2,000 US dollars per litre meter, which is probably a third of the industry cost to build a ramp of this size, with a concrete floor, fully bolted and shot treated. A real testament to the ability of Fresnel as the operator. This shows the uh, more than a million tonnes of waste we've pulled out developing these ramps. This is the conveyor ramp coming out. The uh, rocks crushed underground, conveyed out to the mill site. Here's the mill site getting ready, a lot of equipment. Long lead items were ordered in uh, December of last year. They're starting to arrive on site, and you can see it's starting to take shape. And uh, we're looking forward to this being a the first, and the forward-looking statement is uh, probably very expandable based on the potential resource growth that we see. Um, first 4,000 tonne per day concentrator getting placed in that area. Now I've got a video, it's a lot easier to show you things on a video than uh, talking all the time. How are you Bruce? Uh, this shows the, uh, the one the Scipio and the Val de Carnes veins at the top, the two portals that we've put in. I wish I had a pointer but I don't. Um, as we go underground you see the combined Val de Carnes vein, um, the Bonanza zone shown in red, very high grade. That's probably the highest grade undeveloped silver property in the world. And now as we uh, drill deeper, we start to find these parallel structures, uh, anticipata, pre-anticipata. And you can see how convenient that is from a mining point of view when you're down there mining, 80 metres away is another significant mineralised structure. 100 metres away is another significant mineralised structure. Then these new Venatus veins, we announced that in March of this year, north-south structures coming out of the Val de Carnes mineralisation, first time in 500 years that a north-south oriented epithermal vein has been found in the Fresneo area. The area up the top is where the uh, plant's going in and again there's just some pictures showing the work that's been done to date, the progress, and uh, we're looking forward now to the uh, processing plant being constructed and uh, hopefully uh, we start to run this up at the end of 2020 and the ATM kicks in and uh, we have cash flow moving forward. So that slide was there just in case it didn't matter. Um, it's important to, to sort of highlight the importance of these north-south structures. Um, you know, they come out of where we're mining. They uh, are, an, are a original discovery in the area and just as when MAG first discovered the Juanacipio and Valdecanes veins, Fresneo came back down here where you see these lower red lines and found 600 million ounces of silver. It was a new geological theory, a new discovery. We're seeing the same now on the north-south structures and there's no reason not to think that these north-south structures are going to continue across the width of the whole Fresneo trend. What led us to um, these north-south structures being there was the correlation between vein thickness and gold. You can see the red lining up here. We came up to the surface, we could see on the um, satellite imagery, uh, some structures. We drilled them. We now encountered these three in the underground development, so they're real. Uh, gives you some awesome flexibility. 
So as we're building one a Scipio, um, great operation, extraordinarily high return, great cash flow, we'd like to try and stress that MAG is still very much an exploration story. Given the endowment that we've found being quite significant, um, 300, 300 million ounces of silver, we've only explored 5% of the surface area of the property. And we know, based on exploration success from Fresnia outside the joint venture, they've indicated that some of these structures for sure come onto the joint venture ground. We anticipate further discoveries moving forward. The key to what makes uh, this Val de Carnes structure so unique is it's sitting on a fluid upwelling zone. Right? Any geologist in their career would give anything to find the source. And the source for this whole southern area of mineralisation of the Fresnio trend is Val de Carnes. So as we, tend, as we drill deeper, we anticipate finding more structures. It's where we're mining. It's a great place to find uh, additional resources and uh, pretty exciting stuff. So that's it for us. Uh, balance sheet's in good shape. Uh, we expect to start up late 2020. And uh, don't forget, we're still on the exploration story, that from 2021, we'll be making a bucket load of cash. Look at that, I've got time for one question. Um, in the first few years, when, when you're top of these veins, the uh, silver grades are highest. So for our 44% share at today's metal price, for the first three or four years, we'll probably cash flow to our account between 140 and $160 million a year. As you get deeper, uh, the silver grade does go down, but the base metal grades come up, so it offsets a bit. Later in the mine life, that's probably more like uh, 70 to 90 million. That assumes no other veins are found, and it doesn't include those parallel structures that we've already found. So life of mine, 100 to 120 million is probably a good number at these metal prices. Which uh, Lead and zinc. Zinc's a primary driver of that, and as we get deeper, then copper comes in. Because we're in a fluid upwelling zone, there's very high grade copper at the bottom, and it's the only place in that whole system where copper's been detected. Thank you. All right, everyone. Oh, yeah, Richard? It's close. It, it may or may not be enough. We're just truing up the capital now. Uh, we think if we need any more capital, it's going to be incremental. Uh, we've seen lots of savings come through on some of the contract rates for the construction. The underground development's going in lower than the estimates. So in, in early next year, we'll have an idea. Uh, but I think we're pretty close. We're not worried about it. Um, it's going to be incremental if we need anything. Okay, thank you everyone.